To get into the formula builder, so let's say I'm on the maximum function right now, I can click on the formulas tab and see all these really fancy formulas already calculated out for me. So I don't have to actually remember any of them. Um, before, it wasn't really an, much of an option in Excel and some of the older versions, but the newer versions have kind of uh, started to put in a, a little bit of a formula builder. So you have your pretty default ones where you've got auto sum, which will have your average, your count numbers, your minimum, maximum. You've got your recently used, hyperlink, count, max, sum if, payment, standard deviation, uh, financial ones, logical, text, date and time, lookup references, math and trig, lots of different options. That's why there could be like a week's worth of class just on how to use every single formula that is in Microsoft Excel. So the main thing is not to remember all of them. You'll remember a few that you've used a few times. But the, the goal is that if you know that you need to create a formula and there's got to be something already built in Excel to do it for you, it's just to kind of know that I'll need to go to the formulas tab and I, I need to play around in the formulas tab a little bit to kind of figure things out. So if I want to build this one using the formulas tab and find out the highest cost, I'm going to use the insert function option. Because I'm not exactly sure, let's say, what category those may be in. I just know it's going to be something in particular. You can select a category here. I'm just going to use all because I'm going to search everything. And this gives you the ability to search through every single function that's available. I can scroll through them, or I can click up here and type in a brief description. Let's do maximum value. I'll hit go. And now it'll automatically try to filter based on what I've just said. I want to find the maximum value. So I'm searching for the function that'll provide that. Excel is smart enough to try to figure that out for you. It gave me a list of options that are filtered to my choice, and, they're my, and, and you'll see they're in our category of recommended. Well, this one I can look at. I can now see that Dmax will return the largest number in a field of records in a database. Value will convert text strings to a number or max a returns the largest value in a set of values and it does not ignore illogical values in text and max returns the largest value in a set of values and ignores logical values in text well this one I just want to use max for finding the maximum so I'll select that formula and hit OK and you'll see that it already pre-fills in a default range just because max value is right below the column that I'm working with. But in this turn, I'm not looking for the maximum quantity on hand. I'm looking for the highest cost item. So I'll need to adjust this range a little bit. In here, you have the ability to type over that range. And I can go in here and just say, well, I need to be in C4. And I want to run from C4 all the way down to C9. So I can go over to B14 and type in C9, which will use and give me the correct range of cells. You can see what on the fly calculation is for this, is right below it, based on the range I inputted in, $20.95 is my highest value in that range. If I look back over at the range that I inputted in, under cost, $20.95 is my highest cost value. Well, if you, don't, if you happen to have a lot larger range and you don't want to type it in, you can obviously select the range too. So if I delete this all out, as long as I've got my cursor highlighted in one of these given numbers, I can do that highlighting and just highlight the range itself as well. It does everything, you know, no different than just typing it in. 
just if you have a larger range or you want to you have to do multiple ranges then you can build that all in in that manner same value twenty dollars and ninety five cents so it yielded the same value for this just a different way of selecting the cells and inputting the data after you're done you can click OK and you'll see that based on the formula that we created it returned that $20.95 is the highest cost item that I have in stock. Make sense so far? Cool. So the next one would be what a total order cost would be. Well, I can't calculate my total order cost because I don't have a total cost yet. And to find out what I have for my total cost, I need to be able to calculate my quantity on hand times cost and, and create a total cost per item. Or let's say total cost of inventory. And this will give me a total cost for all my inventory of spoons, plates, forks, bowls, tablecloths, and menus. Now to do that we've already done the, the equal sum formula or, or even just an equals formula. So typically, how would you calculate your formula for this for this particular problem? Equals sum. Okay. So I'll do equals sum. B parentheses. Uh huh. B twelve. Oh, sorry. B four times C four. B four times C4 in my formula and hit enter, which will give me a total cost of $11.40. Has anybody used the fill handle before? So you've just calculated that formula. When you go down to the next cell, what, what would you do to, to calculate that, for, that again? Would you typically type in that formula one more time? Okay, very cool. So click on the cell above it, drag down, and it'll go ahead and populate that formula as well as increment those values down to the previous cells, or the below cells. So now we've got 1140, 8325, 480, and so forth. So we've built out our entire formulas. Now we want to calculate what instead of our total order cost, our total inventory value. So give us an idea of what the total value is of what inventory we currently have in, on hand. So to do that one, we're back with equal sum again, and we'll just select the range like we have been before. Once we've selected the range, we end the bracket and hit enter. And now we know that our total inventory value is roughly $1,442.25.